so uh, hopefully all of you are doing well and uh, congratulations to the students uh, Pak Johannes uh, all of them playing wonderfully um, and thank you for inviting me to be in this uh, Zoominar that I hope that I can uh, uh, provide uh, some uh, brief overview about the origin and development of Balat before we listen to the great performance uh, of Pak Johannes himself yeah uh, let me uh, share screen that I already prepare. Uh, can you all see the screen? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, since I'm given 15 minutes, uh, and, and so I will do my best to, to cover uh, this amazing poetic genre of the Western music, yeah? Uh, I have two points uh, to discuss, to cover tonight. Uh, number one is basically the origin and development of the ballad, and number two, a brief overview of Chopin's ballads. Uh, before we go on, uh, I would like to give you the summary yeah, about ballad itself. Uh, let's look at point number one A. Uh, ballad has a long history in music, poetry, and literature, so it's not just uh, uh, associated with music only. Definition, maybe some of you have seen the word balat without E and balat with E. So when we define balat without E, it's actually a poem. It's a narrative poem. Yeah? And balat with E is basically a musical composition based on the narrative elements. So slightly, uh, apa, uh, sedikit sekali perbedaan antara ini ya. Uh, the third summary that ballads are found in all forms of music, in classic, in folk, in country, rock, jazz, etc. So it's not just in classical tradition. And, and the fourth summary, that the form uh, has continuously shifted over time. However, it is always associated with some form of storytelling. Yeah, jadi walaupun ballad itu di 14th century and then in 18th century, in 19th century, it, uh, apa, uh, it, it has continuous changes of form, but basically it, it has the same uh, definition, it has the same, the same understanding, it has the same meaning, which is storytelling. And usually the topic is about love and love lost. Okay, so uh, that's the summary of the term balat. Now let's look at the origin of this term, uh, point B. The term ballad in music, so I'm not talking in the literature or in apapun ya, because uh, we're, we're talking in the music setting here, was first used in the 14th century, which is perhaps uh, a lot of uh, people considered 14th century as the golden age of medieval era, referred to as Ars Nova, yang artinya new art in which composers invented many new ideas in music, including the musical form, ballad, for secular vocal music. Yeah, uh, mungkin untuk additional notes, uh, bahwa before uh, 14th century, music basically uh, does not have specific form because music was set in either sectional or true composed or strophic form. So basically, the invention of musical form in the 14th century, which is ballad, rondo, and virolai, uh, it was a, such an accomplishment. And then, uh, two, ballad was originally a combination of song, dance, and folk story of European tradition. Hence, it's called a dancing song. And over time, ballad was continuously associated with a written poem especially in the 19th century, entering 19th century, associated especially again with German poem. Uh, three, ballad is a tale. It's a narrative story, a story about histories, legends, fairy tales, jokes, love, crime, etc. It's a story. Yeah. Uh, four, uh, ballad is based on oral tradition sung by traveling performers. Five, uh, its main topic, again, was courtly love, emphasizing nobility. And six, many of the ballads were usually slow, 
and emotionally evocative atau programmatic describing someone describing something describing a stage of emotion ya yeah. uh, now let's look very quickly uh, bagaimana development balat ya yeah, in music setting throughout historical eras uh, yang pertama kita bisa lihat uh, 10th to 13th centuries monophonic balat Balatnya ada di dalam kutip ya, inside the quotation marks. Kenapa? Because uh, as I already mentioned above, although the term balat in music was first used in the 14th century, however, the earliest predecessor of balat can be found in the vocal music of Troubadour and Trouvere. Troubadour itu artinya a poet musician active in the southern France during that time, and Trouvere in the northern France. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, one of the uh, important composers adalah Adam de la Hall, ya, dengan lagunya dia yang judulnya Love Story of Robin and Marian. The narrative of this monophonic music, monophonic itu artinya berarti just one single melodic line, ya, without any accompaniment part. The narrative is as follows, Robin loves me, so the keyword loves, Robin has me. Robin asked me if he can have me. Robin uh, bought me a skirt of scarlet, good and pretty, a bodice and belt. Hooray! So it's again, it's all about love story. And then uh, go on to the 14th century, now polyphonic ballad. So it means that the ballad was written uh, not with one single melodic line, but polyphonic, yeah? So it means three, four lines. Uh, begins with a great composer of the 14th century, uh, Guillaume de Machaut, the leading French poet and composer of the 14th century. Yeah. The genre, ballad, is considered as the most expressive form jika compared to Rondo and Virolai, and composers use it to express the loftiest emotions, especially the declarations of love in the highest style. Yeah. Basically, just to discuss uh, The, the term balat in each of this century itu takes maybe three weeks kali ya. Jadi ini betul-betul just overview is very uh, apa brief overview. Lalu balat in the 15th century. Uh, jadi ini in the Renaissance era, the balat was out of use. However, one specific composer excelled in writing a few numbers, yaitu Guillaume Dufay. So two different people yang tadi Guillaume de Macho, ini Guillaume Dufay. Um, for example, one of the most often analyzed uh, ballad adalah itu ya, Awake and Be Merry. Uh, several important words yang ada di balatnya ini adalah Awake, Be Merry, Be Joyous, Lovers, All Who Love Gentleness, Great Honor, To Live Honestly. So just just uh, notice all the, the, the keywords ya, of ballad. Uh, during 16th to 18th centuries, the form ballad gradually disappeared among the poets, only to reappear sporadically. However, English composers held this genre prominent. Ya, jadi, in, uh, apa, England, uh, composers in England still wrote ballad, including the famous ballad opera, which focused on the popular English folk songs and lower class characters, misalnya The Beggar's Opera set by John Gay. Ya, uh, itu apa nar- naratifnya by John Gay, lalu musiknya by Johann Christoph Pepusch. Um, next, during the early 19th century, ballad regained prominence, especially in Germany, since poets imitated or translated the traditional English ballad. Later became the important sources for the development of the lead. Uh, lead bagi yang Uh, not familiar with the term. Lied is basically a song, an art song uh, in German text, uh, usually sung with piano accompaniment. Yeah. Jadi, uh, apa, the, the imitation and the translation of English ballad itu menjadi important sources for the de- development of the lead in, in Germany. Uh, the German poets at that time, uh, including Goethe, Schiller, Uhland, and Heinrich Hein, whose works were set to music by composers including Zumstieg, Reichardt, Zelter. Yeah. Dan eventually nantinya 
Schubert ya yang yang mungkin paling terkenal juga uh, untuk penulisan art song uh, and ballad juga. Nah, uh, it also in the 19th century, for example, Robert Schumann, maybe we know Schumann as a as a piano composer uh, mainly, but he wrote actually several cantatas Uh, based on ballad text by Johann Uhland, and then list with his symphonic poems, yang total ada 12 numbers. Uh, for example, Mazeppa, it was written uh, on the ballad uh, after Victor Hugo. And then Richard Wagner uh, with his opera The Flying Dutchman after Heinrich Hein, and apparently Chopin with his four ballads after Adam Mickiewicz. And then the uh, apa the the next uh, term ballad entering 20th century, uh, the term is associated with slow to mid tempo love song again love song that can be found in popular music marketplace. Jadi uh, ballad ini sekarang uh, bisa dibilang more more famous in in the popular music marketplace ya yeah, in, in the 20th century. Uh, it is uh, distributed throughout Western regions. But especially important in the United States, yeah. Misalnya, for example, American Ballad uh, associated with the blues ballad, American Ballad by Stephen Foster, American Ballad by the composers of Tin Pan Alley, uh, which is the beginning of pop music, and Broadway, uh, American Ballad by traditional pop and rock composers, misalnya Frank Sinatra and Elton John, respectively. Yeah, jadi basically uh, that's uh, how the term ballad basically uh, originated. and develop throughout uh, historical eras. Uh, and the second point that I would like to share adalah overview of Chopin's ballads, yang mana I believe uh, Pak Johannes will uh, uh, go deeper and further after this session. So I'm just going to introduce, ya. Yeah? Uh, a, Chopin essentially created a new definition of the term ballad for solo piano work. Betul-betul a new definition. Yeah, it's not like ballad that we just talked uh, on the previous pages. Yeah. B, all these ballads, uh, Chopin wrote four ballads. These have nothing to do with the dance songs of the 14th century French poetry. Yeah, uh, yang uh, ditulis misalnya oleh kayak tadi uh, Guillaume de Macho atau Philippe de Vitry. Chopin knew nothing of these sources definitely. Yeah. However, Chopin was aware of the revival of the ballad by German poets during late 18th century, entering 19th century. Uh, see, in uh, Chopin's case, the inspiration to write ballads, at least ada empat resources, ya. Yang number one, undoubtedly from the Lithuanian ballads of Adam Mickiewicz, yeah, which in- inspired him to write similarly for piano music. Uh, mungkin ada yang penasaran kenapa Lithuania. Note that Lithuania and Poland were uh, apa, uh, a joint country yeah, for what about what uh, almost 200 years. Uh, the second inspiration adalah, of course, the early Romantic ballad poetry in the 19th century. The third inspiration perhaps was Schubert's ballad, which is often set in 6-8 or 6-4 meter associated with Chopin's own. And the fourth inspiration is the 19th century French Grand Opera, where the title Ballad was used at times to describe a simple narrative song. D. The ballads were Chopin's closest point of contact with program music. Yeah, uh, mungkin for additional notes bahwa in the 19th century, uh, of course, there was a very hot debate uh, among composers uh, between absolute and program music yeah in which uh, for example composers like Liszt wrote so many uh, program music yeah program music means music with specific title describing again describing a person describing a landscape describing a stage of emotion so maybe perhaps ballads were Chopin's closest point uh, of contact with program music however these were not program music yeah Therefore, they were, they were without words or titles. The title ballad 
is basically in Chopin just to signify only the most generalized aspects of literary inspirations. Yeah, only in general. So it's not like specific uh, narrative story with specific poem or something like that. Uh, the four ballads, uh, E, uh, remember that Chopin is credited with the invention of the ballad as a musical form. Yeah, a whole new form for piano work, uh, very exclusive. And uh, the four ballads uh, definitely would inspire Liszt and Brahms, among other great composers who wrote ballads uh, after Chopin, to explore further of this form. Ballad number one, two, three, four. Uh, itu cuma sekedar information aja. Written in Paris, written in Mallorca, written in Nohant, and written in Paris lagi. Ya, yeah. uh, itu uh, apa namanya program notes aja inspired by uh, which poem dari Adam Mickiewicz ya. Um, dan poin terakhir saya, uh, this ballads of Chopin are structured in the sonata form. Well, it's it's rather difficult to say uh, whether it's a sonata form or not because it's not exactly sonata form, with two general differences here uh, compared to his sonatas. Yang pertama adalah, obviously, it is structured uh, uh, with the vision to the end. Jadi, end weighted. Di mana structural crescendos and growth in the overall intensity menuju ke belakang, gitu ya. Dan uh, the second one is highlight thematic process using uh, variation and transformation techniques uh, to describe the adventures of two contrasting themes. So, expect in Chopin Ballads, in, in ballad number one, two, three, four, that Chopin wrote two uh, themes uh, that are very contrasting and also expect uh, that Chopin used a lot of uh, variations and thematic modification, thematic transformation technique, basically to, to uh, vary uh, those two uh, themes. Yeah, uh, kurang lebih begitu uh, yang bisa saya share Pak Johannes